how's everybody doing today and as you can see we are rebuilding the baltimore orioles so if you guys are looking forward to this video make sure you hit the like button down below subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content and as always in the comment section let me know which team to do next you guys basically said you wanted face cam um on the last video i know some of you guys said no but um for the most part most of you did say yes so we'll leave it for now and you always ask me which roster i'm going to use so here is the roster we're using for today um, you go to the roster vault and it's called 2019 roster with top prospects two. It's the top one that I'm using. You guys can see it's highlighted 2019 roster with top prospect with top prospects two. So it'll also be on text on the screen. So literally within the first 40 seconds of this video, I told you which roster it is. Do not comment which roster did I use. So let's get into it. Like I said, we're using the Baltimore Orioles today. Hands down, the worst team in baseball. I mean, before I was getting into this, I had to think about like which player would I want to build around, which players do I feel comfortable keeping, which players would I even want to keep. And let's talk about that really, really quickly because the last two videos have been kind of long for my preference. I want to try to get it down to around that 40 minute mark. Um, for the first two, I've been trying to like get used to trades and everything. So I've been trying to figure out a good time limit. So I really want to try to chop it down to about 40 minutes. So enough talking. Let's get into this rebuild. So starting pitching wise, really the only one I'd be cool with keeping is Dylan Bundy. Um, I hope Matt Harvey, not Matt Harvey, <laughs> Hunter Harvey develops quickly. Um, they do have a couple decent little prospects. But for the most part, I think we're going to have to clear out all our prospects, any players worth the value to try to get a team that's worth keeping on to because when I look at this team, there really aren't too many players I want to keep. Tanner Scott, possibly. Paul Fry, probably not. Tanner Scott's probably the only one I want to keep there. Michael Givens, I'm going to see how well he does. If he does well, we'll keep him. We also do have two decent uh, closing prospects that we could use as well. Chance Cisco in real life was just optioned down to AAA. So I don't know if he'll actually have a good enough rating for him to be good, like to actually feature in this rebuild um i think he's a he's got he's got the hype he has the talent will he live up to it in real life so obviously a catcher is another position of need the big thing right here with first base is this contract we need to find a way to get rid of it and it's going to be very difficult because not a lot of teams can take on a 23 million dollar contract um especially because he won't have any trade value second baseman jonathan vr for now is good um, but maybe in the future, we'll have to find someone else because he's 88 overall. I don't think he's going to hold on to that rating. I don't think he deserves an 88 overall. I think this is a very high overall for him. But with C potential, he definitely will drop. Um, second baseman or third baseman, we got Renato Nunez and Ryan Mountcastle. Um, Nunez should be good. He should develop pretty quickly. So I'm okay with him staying at third base. I'll say this Escobar, probably need a new shortstop. Trey Mancini, I'm probably going to move to first base that's probably what i'm gonna do because then i'll have joey reichard in right and dj stewart in left and then have cedric mullins in center and then trey mancini at first so that's probably what i'll do i mean the outfield's young they've got some little they got some nice talents using ideas as well and I'm, I'm kind of excited to see how they do but i'm probably gonna i'm actually gonna do that right now we're gonna move him to first because he used to play first base and uh that way, that should help out his rating a little bit. Not really, actually. Kind of brought him down. But I think it'll work a little bit better. Then we can trade uh, for... Um, we don't have to worry about losing a first baseman once we trade Chris Davis. So then we have these two. And you know what? I like that a little bit better. So that's that's the roster. I try to kind of keep it quick. Um, even though it really it really wasn't. Basically, the roster sucks. We need, we need a completely new team. First trade we're making is with the Brewers, Mike Moustakis and Chase Anderson. Um, the reason we need to take on these big contracts is because we're trying to trade away Chris Davis, who 23 million is just, what a horrible contract. I get he had that one season, like a couple, like two seasons back to back, absolutely mashed the ball. Um, and then a couple years before, 53 homers. So he was a huge power threat, but oh, it's so bad now. Um, the big piece in this one is Rio Ruiz, but at 59 overall, he's just not going to feature in this rebuild. And then another player is Hunter Cabrera, who's one of our lowest rated starting pitchers. We're getting Mike Moustakis, who one year on his contract. So if we want to, we can try to bring him back in the offseason. But, 
you know what we we kind of did need a third baseman a little bit we could also use him as a dh because you know we are in the american league and also a starting pitcher in chase anderson who i most likely won't be bringing back at all um but he was another way just to get the the trade to happen because of budgetary constraints so that's the trade I mean, it actually kind of worked out for us. All right, the next trade is, I didn't realize Alex Cobb had such a big contract over the next three years, 14 million. He's definitely out the door. It, it hurts our pitching a lot. He is our highest rated pitcher, but that's okay. Um, we're also trading Joey Reichard and Erwin Rosado, who's one of our better pitchers um, in terms of prospects for Jack Peterson of the Dodgers. Left field, 26 years old and 82 overall. It opens up some salary. It gives us a new outfielder. I'm okay with this trade. All right, we're trading Jeffrey Ramirez, who's actually our five starter, which is a little sad to see. But, oh, actually, let's just do that. I mean, I know I know we're clearing house on, on our prospects, but David Hess is just probably not going to feature in this rebuild. And because this team is so bad, we need to find ways to make it a little bit better. Um, we're also trading our backup second baseman, Jace Peterson. For Marcus Semyon of the Athletics, who, if you look at his stats, I can see him in real life actually having a pretty solid year this year. 15 homers and 70 ribbies and a 388 slugging percentage with a 318 on base percentage, 255 average. Pretty solid. His stats have only continued to go up. And overall, he doesn't look too bad. He's a 78 overall B potential, 28 years old. I'm okay with him joining us at uh, shortstop. Um... You know, it gives us a backup in uh, Alcides Escobar now, who is our leadoff hitter. And now Semyon is our leadoff hitter. And I guess we can quickly look at the lineup because I think that's the only trade I'm going to be making this year that affects the infield. Unless at the deadline day, we need to make a deal. So Jack Peterson and Semyon join the lineup and also Moustakis. And then for pitching... Um, you can see this is what we're looking like right now. And I made a big splash in free agency bringing in Craig Kimbrell. I normally don't like to go free agents um, right away, but he's just too good to pass up. That allows us to move Givens into that setup role. Now we got Givens, Kimbrell. It strengthens the bullpen a little bit, at least the back half of it. And we're looking a little bit better. I'm liking the way, you know, the, the small pieces we added. We didn't really add anybody that I'm like, holy cow. They're completely going to change the team. Kimbrel is kind of that borderline. Like he could change a team. If he can lock up games, we're good. But, you know, Moustakis is 30. I normally don't like to trade for 30 year olds. But again, it was to get rid of Chris Davis's contract. So those are our trades. Let's get into the season. I'll see you at draft day. Alrighty, draft day. Let's get into it. The first pick. Ooh, this is, a, I think it's like one of the very first times besides the zero overall franchise we've had the first pick. Alrighty, so I'm looking between two players. The first one is Ryan Keys. Not necessarily power, but everything else for his projected stats look really good. He's already a 70 overall, at least good potential. Like those stats look really good. The other player I was looking at was Eric Cordero. Kind of the same thing. Not necessarily a powerful hitter, but his stats outside of that look really good. I think that was the only other the only other player that I was like really torn between. Yeah. So looking at it, it's Ryan Keys or Eric Cordero. Ooh, this is It's looking like Keys Man. This is a tough one. They they're they're basically identical. It looks like plate vision's a little bit lower I think for Cordero. We're going to go Ryan Keys. Might as well. I, it, it's a toss-up. Either way, I feel like both are really good options. And there's no way he made... Did Cordero go all the way? There? Oh, he got selected almost at the... Oh, right before the end of the first. I was going to be like, there's no way that guy lasted that long in the draft. Alvaro Guzman is going to be our next pick. He's, you know, a fully scouted player. His stats for the future don't look too amazing. But I'm hoping maybe that, you know, he outlives, the, like he actually outperforms those stats. Um, he was one of our better scouted players left, so might as well pick him up. Alrighty, this guy's walks per nines are pretty bad, but Marshall DiMaggio, you, you gotta pick him based on the name, right? We'll see if he lives up to the hype. Kent Kane. Um, 
because I've looked at every other player that's available. Really, the only other one that caught my eye was, where is he? Alex Santos. But I feel like catcher, we aren't too strong. We do have Chance Cisco, but I don't know if he's going to live up to the hype. Ted Albert, fully scouted. You know, 75 potential doesn't look too great, but it's another closing pitcher who we have fully scouted we know his overalls at least a 70 so that's not too bad to get right away we'll go pete willie oh no he's only got three pitches i don't know something about three pitch pitchers just in the sim style franchise just kind of bothers me um james woodruff we'll just go with him and we got one more pick let's see who we go with all right i said we weren't we weren't gonna pick pete william but we'll do it um see what happens he could prove me wrong. Um, and now let's go see what these picks look like. Alrighty, so here we go. Ryan Keyes, 75 overall center fielder already. So he's already our best center fielder compared to Cedric Mullins. Hitting wise, not bad. Good contact numbers at 68 and 77 for a first year player. Um, he's 21, so he's I'm pretty sure he was a blue chip player. Um, fielding stats, pretty decent. 77 strength is solid. 77 speed as well. Um, this is a player that looks... You know, I'm, I'm happy we went with him in that first pick. The other one was, let me, he was a left fielder. Let me go find him so that um, we can go see if, how he compared. Alrighty, so this is Eric Cordero. He's got 86 potential. He's 73 overall. Um, We made the, we made the good pick. I've, I'm, I'm happy with keys. Alrighty, the next pick we made was Alfaro Guzman, 74, or Guzman, 74 overall. As a starting pitcher, his potential and his overall are down. I don't like to see that because I'm pretty sure Keys was the opposite. Um, but Guzman, I mean, 74 overall, already one of our better pitchers. He's 20. I definitely think he could possibly make the starting rotation first season. He's in the bigs. 90 potential. I can get behind that one as well. I know I've been saying that a lot. I probably should stop saying that. Um, Marshall DiMaggio, 60 overall, but his potential's arrow is going up. Good velocity. His per nine stats are pretty lackluster but 81 potential um kent kane eh you know i'm not i'm not feeling it i might let him walk ted albert's a closer he's got b potential going down but his overall is going up his hits per nine pretty pretty good 80 that's nice to see he's 75 overall so another player who could potentially help us in the bullpen next season and he's got an 81 uh potential james woodruff is 59 overall and an 81 potential but both of them are actually going down both arrows for potential and overall not good you know his stats aren't that great but um if he lives up to 81 potential that's not too bad and then pete william he's 72 overall a reliever potential is going down overall is going up but who knows he may actually be a decent you know middle reliever for us who happen you know who who really knows but i'm liking ryan keys i'm liking alfaro guzman and then you know even Ted Albert was a good pickup. So overall, this draft was pretty solid. Alrighty, so the standings were not last, which I 100% expected us to be there. We're 27 games behind the Yankees. And, I'm not, hey, we're not last. So really quickly, we'll look over how everyone's doing. You guys can see the, the stats in the top left. left. Um, so we're going to quickly just kind of look at them. I'm... I'm not looking too deep into him right now. Let's see. Why do we have a reliever here? What happened? What's what's going on here? Um, Everything should be on manual. So there's no reason why the CPU should be switching up my, my team here. But uh, let's let's just see if anybody's like just growing. Jeffrey Ramirez is going up. But like I said, I don't think he's going to be a player that's going to feature a lot in this rebuild. Dylan Bundy says he's going up, but not by too much. Um, but overall, he's probably our best pitcher. Uh, Tanner Scott, I mean, I can't really look too much into it when he's been starting. Gregory Infante is actually going down on both, which is not good to see because he's one of our better relievers. Um, Paul Fry is going up, which is good, even though his stats don't really show that he should be going up. But as long as he's developing, that's what I want to see. Richard Blyer. At 31, you know, he's going up and overall, I'm happy to see that. Michael Gibbons is going up still, which is good. And Craig Kimbrell is probably going to start to plateau. So as long as he holds this spot right here, 83, or maybe even go up a little bit, I'm happy with that. 
let's quickly look at the lineup see how things are going on the bench i'll say this escobar is probably going to start to decrease um even though it says he's going up austin wins is going up and then renato nunez i want him to start developing a little bit more too which is uh hopefully something that will happen um who's our dh no dh dh is trumbo yeah we should be Mustakis, and then okay we'll work with i don't know why the cpu has completely changed our roster or our lineup and i don't understand why it did because it's not supposed to uh vr is going down and like i said it probably would happen um Semyon's kind of holding the same st stat line his hitting wise is not as good um as i would have hoped hopefully it continues to go up though his rating um Mustakis is going up not having a good season at all um jack peterson um 241 man it's like the players we're training for just aren't doing as well as i would have hoped trey mancini is going up though he's hitting 270 okay dj stewart is he going up it says he is and he's at 270 that's a good year what's his on base percentage 326 458 slugging okay um jesus sucre you know, he's kind of a stopgap catcher until we can find a really good one. Cedric Mullins is up to a 70, and he definitely has to look out because we just drafted Keys, who could be a key. You see what I did there? <laughs> In our lineup. So, um, like I said, I really just want to go through this quickly. I want to see if we were having any players like having a good year and they were going up in rating. It doesn't seem like any of that's happening, which is a little sad. It's kind of sad. It, it's sad. It really is. So, Let's see if we can find a trade that will find some. Ah, what do we need? Maybe because I don't think Jonathan VR is going to go up at all. I actually think he's going to continue to go down. Maybe trade him while he has a little bit of value and find a new second baseman. Alrighty, so I've been looking at second baseman. And to be honest, the only one that interests me is Adam Frazier because he's going up in rating and he's actually having a good season. But... I don't know if I want to make that trade. So then I started looking at shortstops and Paul DeYoung is always a name that I really like picking up for shortstop. He's a very good uh, player who can play multiple positions. He's a utility player. He's also got really good hitting stats. Um, so we can make basically make this trade just adding one more player. But I know you guys are always like, stop picking up Paul DeYoung. So another player that did come up was Didi Gregorius, but he's almost 30. And to be honest, I'd rather get someone a little bit younger and another name which was a possibility that i saw was where is he where is he wait 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 uh gene segura but again he's almost 30 so sorry guys i'm going for paul de young we're gonna make it happen so jonathan vr zach vincege and then javier reyes i'm gonna show you guys them real quick deep potential and 58 overall for paul de young it's a good trade Alrighty, so we finished the season 67 and 95. So better than last year in real life. So let's see how the team did really quickly. Obviously with season one, I'm not too interested besides Dylan Bundy, who has actually gone up since the middle of the season, 76 overall. Um, so he might be our four or five starter next year, maybe even our three. Um, Chase Anderson, not a player I'm looking to bring back, even though his year wasn't horrible. Um, Tanner Scott's a player I'm looking to hopefully keep on to. I don't know, actually. He might, <laughs> based on that season and the fact that his potential and overall have started to decrease, or his overall has gone up, but his potential has gone down. Might be a player I look to move on from. Gregory Infante. I was hoping he would have at least held his rating, but starting to go down. Paul Fry was a player I'm looking to keep. Um, he's continuing to go up. Um, Richard Blyer, maybe. If. Yeah, he's on arbitration. I think we'll keep him. Michael Gibbons is going up. Definitely a player I'm looking to keep. And then Craig Kimbrell went up as well. So he will 100% be a player we're looking to keep. 42 saves. He matched his number from last year. Less blown saves. And those are really nice numbers for sure. Um, looking at our lineup. Um, what? Oh, I forgot to turn off injuries again. Tremantini got hurt. <laughs> All right, so that's that's an issue. I got I gotta remember to turn off injuries. So Marcus Semyon didn't have the year I was hoping he would, but he is going up, so that's good. I moved Paul DeYoung to a second baseman, so you can see his overall is going to be a little bit inflated. Um, but 
he he's more of a second baseman in my eyes i know in real life he's really been working on that um defensive ability but since we have Sem semian moving him to second base definitely is the move and you can see he is he's going to be one of our better hitters mike moustakis a little bit better than the first half of the season but still not as good as i would have hoped jack peterson i'm really hoping picks it up um i have a pretty comparable season to last year um in terms of home runs and rbis but he also had 200 more at bats so hopefully he can do a little bit better next year mike Trumbo, mark trumbo i'm not too worried about dj stewart i need him to do actually i just need him to grow a little bit quicker 64 ribbies 21 homers 328 on base percentage that's not a bad season first full season that's not too bad at all cedric mullins not too bad not too bad that's that's okay you know he was at what a 68 at the beginning of the season he went up three overall that's a good that's good growth those are good numbers 250 on you know 250 average not too bad two or 328 on base percentage okay that's not as bad as i anticipated like i first thought so looking at our pitching again none of our prospects are going to be major league ready we had andy barrero who who could have stepped in and helped us but I don't know if he really would have um pitching prospects there those are these two guys are looking really good and i think they might be more of trade pieces since we do have givens and kimbrell um chance this goes up to a seven or 67 let's see anybody else mount castles a 68 so maybe by season three he'll crack the big league squad renato nunez is a 71 angel vielma's possibly a backup next season and outside of that we're not looking too too promising so this is the playoff bracket we'll show you the standings we didn't finish last so that's that's a win that's definitely a plus and who won an award gold glove for paul de young you guys can see the mvps for the season so that's the season in a nutshell pretty quickly just glancing over and just focusing on the players that i wanted to and looking to keep the rest were really players that i'd be perfectly fine leaving like them leaving this offseason. So the Red Sox defeat the Nationals this this season. And let's get into the offseason. Alright, so with the new pay, uh, contract stack, uh, structure, we can use a back-loaded contract rather it being a front-loaded contract. It doesn't affect any of his interest, well, this player specifically. But we're going for four years, six and a half for Mike Moustakis. Um, you know, for six million a year, that's, that's not horrible. I know he is going to be 31, 32 come next season. But as a DH... Maybe he'll do the job, and then the rest of the guys, I don't want them. Alrighty, so the players that were offered arbitration were top three, um, Bundy and Blyer, and then Carlos Perez and Mancini. Contract-wise, uh, I'm going to let Infante walk, and then these two will probably get one. And then the rest will probably get one as well. Alrighty, Renato Nunez, Reggie Prado, and Juan Castillo for Jermaine Marquez of the Rockies. Decent stats, 82 overall. We are in need of a starting pitcher badly. So that's why I did that one. Um, the big piece was one of those closers. We do have another closer who's 26 and he's 70 overall. So I'm going to see if we can find another starter. We are in massive needs of starters. There really weren't any good ones on the free agency like market, so we're gonna have to find them through trades. Alrighty, the next trade we're making is for Robbie Ray of the Diamondbacks. Decent season last year. Um, and again, like I said, we're in need of pitching. So Austin wins our backup catcher. Um, that allows Chance Cisco to come up to the majors. And who else? A right fielder with a potential. I, th I think he's just on a rookie contract. I think I found him in the free agency pool. He's not massive trade value at all. And then again, one of those closing prospects that we've had in our farm system. So that's the trade we're making. Um, and now let me take a look at the team, see if we need to make any other moves. And if not, I'll show you the team for this season. Alrighty, so this is the team going into season two. Robbie Ray, Jermaine Marquez, Bundy, Jeffrey Ramirez, and Alex Wells. Alex Wells is a fit, a rule five draft player. We needed a pitcher and he was like one of the best available. And then you can see the the bullpen here. No big additions or big changes at all. If anything, it got worse. Why is he up? We need to we need to send him down. I thought I sent him down already. Um, let me find him real fast. 
and then maybe we can bring someone up that way yeah we'll bring up this guy he could be of decent help next year and then actually send him down too and we'll bring this guy up milton jowers so that actually makes our our bullpen a little bit stronger or at least it should um okay that's that's something i can you know respect it's a little bit more respectable and then looking at the lineups you guys can see the lineups here we made two changes really luke voigt comes in on a pretty small contract uh 1.5 million he was 81 overall he's a first baseman he's got some power you know decent hitting stats and that really was the only free agency signee that that like i made i'll show you some of our prospects we do have alfaro or yeah alvaro guzman um 74 overall he's one of our better pitchers but when i bring him up to the majors he's only a 70 so that's why i didn't want to bring him up just yet we still do have hunter harvey moving up slowly but surely and then looking at our relief pitching you can see nothing too special there we have ted albert which was a player that we drafted who definitely could you know make the move to the majors soon if need be and then looking at the rest of the team mount castle's almost there um Angel Biyama is almost there. Uh, left field, we do have Dwight Smith Jr. I don't really want him up. I want to bring up Ryan Keyes, but he's not ready just yet because if I bring him up to the majors, he drops down to a 70. And uh, Yusnail Diaz is the same. If I bring him up too soon, he drops down in rating. So not too much has changed with the team. Um, just small changes. And we're going to leave it like that after the trades that we do make. The rotation looks, looks, looks stronger. Um, bullpen looks stronger after we move those players around and uh we'll see how it goes um i normally wanted to make a change somewhere here but i'm gonna see how it goes for now and then we'll make moves as need be Alrighty, so we finished the season 81 and 81 and i just looked over and i just noticed i accidentally muted my mic so from the trade deadline till now we we made some moves and i accidentally muted my mic I, and i forgot my dogs were barking and that's why I muted it because I didn't want it catching up on the recording. So I muted my mic. And then when they stopped, I came back to record. It was like five minutes. But just that five minutes, I completely forgot to unmute my mic. And so we, we, so basically what happened was we made, we made two trades that were pretty, you know, not, not crazy, but, um, they, they were they were just small trades and I'll show you what they were the two trades that we did make is um, we acquired Daniel Mangden and we also acquired another pitcher Victor Arano so those are the two trades that we make I'll probably put a quick screenshot of both just so that you can see that what the trades were and you guys don't think I'm like freaking out and doing something stupid so those were the two trades that we made and um basically what i saw at the trade deadline was that we were five games out in the wild card and we were nine games out of the east which is doing an amazing job we were doing a lot better than i anticipated um so with that being said let's see how the season finished we, you know obviously we didn't make the wild card but you know 13 games out in the east and it's not too bad whoa hiccup hiccup slash burp uh in the east you know 13 games out in the east and in the wild card we missed it by two games so that that's that's really promising for the moves that we made we didn't make any massive moves and it shows that you know the team's starting to come together and this is actually a team that you know doesn't have the craziest of players but we're still looking really good so let's look at the pitching rotation see how everybody finished um, Robbie Ray finished the second half a lot better than the first at the deadline. He had around a high four ERA, but this is, these are, you know, respectable numbers. I know winning loss losses aren't that great, but his hits went down. Runs are about the same home runs actually went up and so did walks, which is not good. Um, but ERA went up and you got to think, I want him to increase in rating. That's what I'm looking for. And when you look at last season, that was a dip. Then he went, you know, like season before his ERA was higher and things like that. So I just want him in reality to be more of a two, three, four starter. I'm looking to maybe add another starting pitcher or two in the offseason. You know, Jermaine Marquez, he's 87 overall. You know, wins and losses aren't there, but he hit 200 innings. You know, 
runs are okay hits are a little bit higher he obviously pitched some more but 369 era whips lower than previous seasons so he could be you know that two or that one starter robbie ray bumps down to this spot you know three four um we got dylan bundy who's an 81 who you know era and stuff went a little bit higher compared to previous years but he's going up in rating so he should continue to go up so maybe he's our four or five starter daniel mangdon four or five starter he had a pretty good year three era low whip runs are low as well um he had 61 runs a lot or 50 earned runs last year and 60 runs allowed um the season before with 112 innings pitched this season he had almost 200 innings pitched and he had very similar runs and earned runs so that's a promising thing to look at Jeffrey ramirez probably not going to be a player that features much longer in this team tanner scott is looking very good k's per nine velocity that's that's nice uh 128 innings pitched whip went down from the previous year the era is high but he's increasing in rating so hopefully he continues to do that paul fry i moved to a long relief role uh at the deadline day and he looks like he handled that role pretty well milton jowers not bad for a player that i wasn't gonna have in the majors this year and i decided last minute to bring him up victor arano the player that we traded for Still a really solid season. 37 innings pitched, a 1-4-5 ERA, and under a 1 whip. Richard Blyer, not as good as previous years. You can see, definitely not as good. Andy Barrero, I mean, again, another player I wasn't going to have in the majors this year. And he had a pretty decent year. You know, 24 innings pitched, 2.25 ERA. I can, that's, that's, that's impressive. Uh, Michael Givens. ERA went down, whip went down, less strikeouts, less innings pitched as well, but, you know, less earned runs, so that's good. He also had 38 holds. Okay, and Kimbrell actually is still saying he's going down, which I don't understand. You know, he's... The whip went up a little bit, the ERA obviously went up as well, but that's still not a horrible season. I don't get it. I don't get it at all, but... Let's take a look at the lineup now. Cedric Mullins is up to a 73, so he's continuing to increase. Obviously, we do have that rookie, or not that rookie, but the prospect, Keys, that we drafted the first season. But, like I said, Mullins is going up, so he's probably going to be a good platoon outfielder for us. Simeon finally hit that 80 mark, and he went above it, and he actually had a solid season. You know, comparable home runs, a little bit more ribbies. Um more walks more stolen bases better average better on base percentage better slugging better ops this is what i was looking for from the shortstop the second baseman de young obviously is just a monster I, uh home runs and ribbies not the same but average went up on base slugging and ops went down these two went down but he still had a good year Musakis is actually continuing to go up so this contract of six and a half a year for a player who's performing very well i like it Jack Peterson, ah, man, I thought he was going to have the season because at the midway point, he had like 18 home runs, 50 ribbies. Like he was almost at the stats he had the season before at the deadline. So I was hoping like this is going to be the season. He's going to hit like 30 plus homers, maybe around 90 ribbies. And I guess he kind of cooled off the second half of the season. Luke Vogt or Voigt, I'm glad I picked him up. And to think. Two years, one and a half million, and he's out here doing these kind of stats. That was a good free agency pickup. And he was late in free agency. He was one of those players that shows up late in free agency. And that's a that's a that's a deal right there. Trey Mancini, that's a good DH. Those are good DH numbers. A little more strikeouts, yeah. But every other hitting stat basically went up. Um Chase's chance Cisco's going up. Not the best hitter, but you can see by stats. He's not a great hitter. And DJ Stewart is almost an 80. So overall, I probably talked about pitching and uh, the lineup a little bit too long. But let's look at the prospects really quick. Alvaro Guzman, 76 overall. He pitched a couple uh, games this season. And he actually did pretty good. So maybe he's a player who we bring up next season. Hunter Harvey's just on the cusp. Probably won't feature though. Um, Ted Albert's almost an 80. So he's probably a player I'm looking to bring up next year. Uh... Who else? Who else? Who else? Mount Castle might be a player that's brought up next season if he hits like the mid 70s in the offseason. And then Ryan Keyes is a 76 now. I, you know, he, you see, he had limited at bats this season, but I definitely think he'll be a player that comes up next season. He'll be around the mid to high 70s. 
and he's a player I want to get involved. Same with Yusin Diaz. So our outfielders are going to be a little, little packed, but you know what? We're very close to a wildcard team. I definitely see us being a playoff team next season. Let's see how this, um, this season finishes. And the Yankees defeat the Cubs in the 2020 World Series in Game 7. So, okay. We're, we're in for a very tough season next year with the Yankees being the World you know, the World Series champions. They're going to be one and obviously repeat that. But let's get into it. Let's see how this offseason treats us. Alrighty, so everybody got arbitration here heading into season three. Contracts wise, we shouldn't, again, we shouldn't have any big contracts. The big contracts um, that we had to look out for were Jock Peterson, um, Robbie Ray, and there was one more, uh, Marcus Semyon. They all wanted about the same amount of money. It was like seven, eight million a year. And Robbie Ray, I was okay with. That's not bad for a, star a starting pitcher who's probably going to be about the three, the three starter. Um, Semyon's our starting shortstop, so I was okay with paying him. Jack Peterson, I went back and forth with. Um, he's is good, but I don't. I was I ended up giving him the contract. Um, I think it was about eight million. And if he just doesn't, if he, at the beginning of the season I don't like him, I'll just trade him. Uh, if I like in my head, I think. You know what? He's not worth that mil eight million. Let's try to find someone a little bit younger, who's a little bit better, maybe for a little bit cheaper, and then that way we can sign a couple more players or something like that. So let's. I'm gonna think about it a little more. But looking at these contracts, we don't have any too too crazy ones, so it should be pretty easy to get through them all and then head into free agency, maybe pick up a player or two. All right, first trade we're making to start the season: Pablo Reyes, a player that um, I saw in the Rule Five draft. I figured, you know what? He's higher rated. He might be worth a little bit. It actually works out for us because we're going to trade him and Andy Barrero, who actually had a solid season last year, but we're going to get a better um, reliever in Edgar Santana. He's 29 years old. Um, he's going to fit in this bullpen nicely, strengthen it up a little bit more. And um, I have one more trade in mind that I think we need just to kind of strengthen the team a little bit more. So I'll catch you guys in a sec. All right, so this trade is kind of a big one, but the issue is I just... Chancisco's not cutting it at short at short catcher, you know, 213. We need someone who can hit. Um, and we're going for JT Real Muto, who actually just signed with the Mariners, but I'm gonna give him a shot. Um, we don't really have many other catching options available that are good. So Chance Cisco, Hanser, Alberto, and a starting pitcher that isn't gonna see any starting time with us, Andreas Carrera, who he actually looks decent. He looks like he's growing pretty quickly as well, but we need that catcher. And that's the move we're going to be making. And I think that's it for the team now. So let's show you how we're looking this year. We're going to give these guys a starting chance. I was kind of hoping to see if we can get a new starter. But I'm going to see how we do here. I feel like the team did pretty well last season. We have our first season draft pick, Alvaro Guzman, starting as well. He might end up being an absolute beast and helping us out a lot. But we got Marquez, Ray, Mangden, Bundy, and Guzman, Scott Fry. Jowers, Blyer, Arano, Santana, and Givens with Kimbrel closing it out. And then obviously with the lineup, now we have JT Real Muto in the catching spot. Whoops. Let's do that real fast. And then I'll show you the team and how we look. We probably do need a, a couple more bats just to kind of help with this area since none of them are too great of hitters. Um, but you can see the team here. Ryan Keyes is moving into the center spot. He's an 80 overall, Semyon 79, De Jong, Vogt, um, Peterson, Moustakis, Mancini, Stewart, and Real Muto. Almost 80 on everybody, so the team has grown like crazy. Our, our pitching rotation, again, is probably still our weakest point, but we'll see how it goes, see what we're looking like at trade deadline day, and hopefully, you know, maybe in that wild card mix, and then maybe make that one trade that'll really help us out so let's see how it goes already the trade we're making uh, i thought we were looking good but i thought maybe get a better um reliever and so we decided to trade richard blyer angel vielma who is our backup shortstop but i think we'll be okay and then dwight smith jr for jace fry of the white Sox. um looks pretty good we need some bullpen arms and it helps us out uh draft day at or so trade trade deadline day so looking at drafts, we had one good player, Thad Not, that the CPU drafted. Everybody else is pretty bad, I would say. Um, 
I don't know why I'm signing them. But looking at the team, you guys could see we are six games out on the east. We're sitting at 500. And in the wild card, we're three games out. So we're about the same as we were last year. Looking at the team, um, Daniel Mangden has definitely jumped up. Uh, Tanner Scott is starting for some reason. What? Is someone hurt? Oh, Dylan Bundy's hurt. Yes, that is correct. Dylan Bundy was hurt. Yes. So that is... I thought we... I changed it so that a pitcher from the minors came up. Awesome. So that's definitely hurt us a lot. So that that's a... The CPU's been moving stuff around for me, and I don't like that. So Jermaine Marquez, Mangden, Ray... And Alvaro, Alvaro Guzman not really having the best of years pitching wise. Um, our pitching as a whole is actually looking pretty bad besides Fry, Santana, and even these two are just not looking too great. So maybe switch them around. So pitching as a whole is not looking too good at the start of the season. But looking at the lineup, you guys can see the stats there. Paul the Young, yes. Uh, Luke Vogt's doing pretty good. Peterson's. Average isn't good, but, you know, the home runs are, you know, getting up there. Moustakis is still doing all right. Um, actually, the average is kind of low, but he might have similar numbers in terms of home runs. Mancini's having a good year. This is good. This is a good thing right here. That's, yes, keep that going. Uh, DJ Stewart's up to an 81 and Real Muto. Not good. Not good at all. You guys can see the bench here. We only have like three players, so it's looking somehow we're 500 the team is a little eh we we do obviously need a new starting pitcher so we might just we might try something here maybe trade like we got him who could be really good for us we might use him instead we might do something yeah we're gonna try to find a new starting pitcher all right so at the deadline i made a trade we haven't moved any farther but you can see uh yoni chirinos and marco lozano for kimbrel hunter harvey and cedric mullins that was the trade i made um really just to solidify the starting rotation and the bullpen a little bit more this is marco lozano and then this is um yoni chirinos who looks really good so that was the only move i made um and now getting into it you know we should be good you know we're six games out in the east we're just outside of the wild card spot let's see how it goes so as you can see 84 and 78 and we just i'm assuming we just missed the playoffs so nine, nine games out in the east wild card by two games so awards jack peterson and luke vote won a gold glove and looking at the team you guys can see we the team is definitely getting better. Let's see how everybody finished the season. Jermaine Marquez, meh. You know, not as good as I would have hoped. Mangden is getting a lot better. He's up to an 87. Yoni Chirinos was a player we probably should have traded for a little bit sooner. Um, he looks like he's going to be an amazing starting pitcher going forward. Robbie Ray is looking like a player I'm going to be moving soon. He's just... Not living up to the hype I would have, you know, that I liked when I traded for him. Um, Alvaro Guzman's looking like he's going to be an ace in the making. Not a bad rookie season for him at all. Solid whip as well. Tanner Scott's looking like he's starting to decrease, which probably a player we should probably look to move on going forward. Paul Fry would be the same. Victor Rano's not really living up to it anymore either. Last season, he did really well. This season, not so much. Marco Lozano, the player we traded for from the Rays. This is first full season, so he should increase. Edgar Santana is a good pickup for us. Definitely did well. Jace Fry, not too bad. And then Michael Givens, you can see, has had a pretty rough year this season. I think some player got sent down. Milton. Yeah, Milton got sent down. I don't know why. Which is really so frustrating because we have good players and the, the cpu is sending them down hmm but looking at the team ryan keys in his first full season hit 250 with a 321 on base percentage 
he, he, he looking like like he's got a potential as actually going down. Oh no, um, semi an 83 overall. You guys can see this. He had not as good as last year in terms of average. Um, actually, all these four stats right here, but similar run production. Paul DeYoung's looking like he's just going to continue to get better and better. Um, Luke Vogt, the same thing. He just hit 30, but he had a pretty solid season. Jock Peterson's potential starting to decrease, and he's just not really living up to the hype that I would have hoped. I mean, don't get me wrong, 20 home runs is nice, but that average just is not good enough. Mike Moustakis is probably going to start to decrease, so he would be a player if we continued this, I would trade away, especially since we have Trey Mancini, who's looking like he's finally hitting stride and looking like a good maybe first baseman DH. Um, we got DJ Stewart, who's just hit the 80 mark and had his best season as a professional. And then JT Real Muto again, just hit 30 and just didn't live up to it, which sucks. So if we were going forward and we were, weren't trying to push for the playoffs this season, I probably would have kept Chan Sisko. I probably would have um, kept a couple other players just because it didn't really pan out. We do have a couple other like you know young players like Dylan Bundy got hurt. That hurt us. Jeffrey Ramirez is looking decent. I, I would have kept on to Hunter Harvey for sure. In the farm system, we do have a couple decent young pitchers. Marshall DiMaggio, one of those that we traded for. Ted Albert never got a chance to appear in this rebuild. Um, Mountcastle really didn't get a chance to keep increasing. He's only 23 and he's already 74 overall. And then we have... Uh, ba -ba -ba, what, what was the other player that we had that we drafted? I think we traded him. Didn't we trade him? I think we did. Oh no, it's the, the pitcher. Oh, oh man, I'm losing it. So that's unfortunately where we're going to end it. We didn't win any, you know, division. We didn't get a wild card spot. We just missed it by two. And normally I like to make the playoffs, but we're going to leave it here. You know, for three seasons to turn this team into almost a playoff team is a pretty big standard considering, you know, last season they barely won any games. And they're not a team that I see making the playoffs or the wild card, I think, for at least another three years in the majors in real life. So to turn this team into where we are now, I'm pretty excited about it. You know, like we created a team that Milton Jowers would probably still be in the majors if the CPU didn't send him down. Pete Williams, a player that could help us out. Ted Albert definitely is a player that can help us out. Um, probably trade away some of these aging players like Moustakis. Um, maybe Real Muto just to find a younger catcher, or we would have kept Chan Sisko. So there are a couple things I would have done differently if I would have known that playoffs weren't going to happen this season. Unfortunately, I was going I was going for broke. I really wanted to win the playoffs, or a playoff spot this season, and unfortunately it didn't work. The Cubs beat the Rays this postseason, and that's where it's gonna end, guys. We do have some good prospects. The Orioles, this team is actually looking good. You know, Keys is young, Semyon just hit 30, DeYoung's in his mid-20s. Vote just hit 30. Um, Peterson would probably be a player I'd be looking to trade away. Uh, you have Mancini who can move into left field and maybe just find a new DH. Um, we got Stewart. Um, I would have kept on to Cedric Mullins if I knew that we weren't going to make the playoffs this season. So there were some moves I would have changed differently. Um, some moves I wouldn't have made and I would have kept on to some players if I knew we weren't making the playoffs this season. So unfortunately, I made those moves and it still didn't pan out. But that's how we're going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed this rebuild. If you did, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.